Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome today to St. Luke Lutheran Church. Glad that everybody is here. Today is one of the whole high holy days of Christianity. It's Mother's Day. And I hope that everybody who is a, a mother uh, received this wonderful little carnation. This is our President Kathy Schwey's idea. And so. Uh, it's a blessing to have that here. Let's just do a, let's start with just a little prayer for the mothers in our congregation, a little blessing. Let's pray. Uh, dear God, thank you for this special day. Um, we know that motherly care lifts us up, helps make the world a much better place. And we ask your blessings today, God, on these carnations, on the people that hold them, and on our entire congregation, all of those that give motherly care. God bless us on this day, lift us up, and uh, help us all to draw closer to you in love. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to take this for my wife, I think. Uh, I think that'll get me some good points. <laughs> um, just a couple of things to share with you. Um, one is that next Sunday is a very important day, and I hope you will attend. Uh, bishop Paul Erickson will be here, and so will Jennifer Arnold, who's the assistant to the bishop, and they will be hosting after worship. Well, Bishop Paul will be preaching at 9 o'clock next week, so please come for that. Um, afterwards, they'll be hosting what's called a little town hall meeting. And what we'll be doing is um, Paul will be sharing, Jennifer will be sharing about the call process, there'll be question and answers. Um, and um, we'll be going over the, the, just the highlights of the mission site profile, which we did talk about a little bit. If you have not gotten a copy of the mission site profile that's going to be given to pastors who are interested in interviewing for this congregation, there are still some copies uh, out there to take home today, so please do that. But anyway, it's a, and after that, after next Sunday, 
And after that date is over, uh, then we'll be, uh, we may be receiving um, names soon to interview for a new pastor. So I hope you'll come and be part of that next week, 9 o'clock, with the town hall meeting following uh, at 10 o'clock. Also, um, I just want to let everybody know I am going to be hosting a new member class in June. It's going to be June 13th and 20th, right after Sunday morning worship. So if you know of someone interested in our congregation, believe it or not, even in the midst of COVID, I've talked to four or five new families that want to join this congregation. So that is a wonderful sign, isn't it? That's a wonderful, wonderful sign. So uh, let me know uh, the office, let Michelle know if there are people interested, but I'll be hosting a new member class uh, starting on June. Uh, 13th. So great to be uh, with you today. Let's rise now and begin with the confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin. Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Joys beyond understanding, 
Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
first reading this morning is from John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. God's children believe that Jesus is the Messiah and love God by keeping God's commandments. Thus the world is conquered not through military might, but through love and faith. And now the reading. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise if you're able. commandments you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends you are my friends if you do what I command you I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I cho chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation, please be seated, and will my special volunteer family come up, whose arms I twisted, come on up here to do this. Come on, Ed, because you guys be free. So, uh, buddy, will you introduce these two people to me in the congregation? Who are these two people? This is Sheila, my mom. It's your mom. Oh, and you came to church on Mother Day. Excellent. Good choice. Good choice. Wow, you know, I just want to say it's so cool to see you guys every week. Mom and grandpa and son together. So I want to tell you, you are probably familiar with Dorotheus, right? <laughs> the sixth century abbot. No, you're not. Okay. I didn't think you were. Dorotheus was an abbot that had a crop. His monk, the monks in his monastery weren't getting along, they were complaining. And he got everybody together at worship, and he made them do a little thing. I thought we'd do it today. He said, find a symbol of God, and this is kind of a symbol of God, got the cross on it, and stand around in a circle. So will you guys stand around in a circle around this thing? Yeah, kind of like in a, yeah, come on over here. Okay. Now stand a little farther apart, a little farther apart. Back a little bit. There you go. He said, the first thing you do is you measure how far apart each of you. Will you hold this? So you are 73 inches from your mom, all right? And you are 69 inches from your grandpa. So Dorothea said what you do then is everybody should move closer to God. So you guys take a step up towards this God. Take a step up towards God. Good. Now let's measure how close you are. You see where this is going? Okay, Mom, hold that. You were 73 inches, right? You're only 47 now. Grandpa, let's see how far you are. You were six. Man, you're only 
53. What did you, what are you learning, buddy? Anything? This is all about math. Great. <laughs> I think what Dorotheus wanted his monks to realize that when you move closer to God, you get closer to each other too. Did you see that? So if you guys were to even move closer to God, try that. Ah, look how close you are to your mom on Mother's Day and to your grandpa. And I think the lesson for Dorotheus is um, you want to get closer to the people around you, the people you care about, get close to God and you'll get close to them. He also said that if you get closer to your mom, you're going to get closer to God. You can't help it. Or if you get closer to grandpa, you might get closer to God too because it all works out here, doesn't it? So, thank you, buddy. Now, will you go Google Dorotheus of Caesarea and learn all you can about him from the, 50, from the 500s? Will you do that? No, you're not very <laughs> much, very baseball game. Let's give this fine family a hand. Thank you, guys. Not everybody knew about Dorotheus, I guess not. I guess so. so it is Mother's Day, and we've already acknowledged that, you know, and um, it's a day to thank everybody, right, who gives motherly love, not just as just mothers, but everybody that gives love, and it's, it's so important because uh, mothers have a big influence on us, right? Um, every year, Mother's Day, my mom's been de dead over 10 years, I think about her, and I can't help myself here, right? It's just an important day, she had such a, a big influence on me. Uh, there was a guy named Phil Keith, he was a big, strong, burly guy, he was the police chief of Knoxville, Tennessee, and he was at a... Um, he was at a press conference. He was kind of standing in the back during a press conference, and his phone started vibrating. He looked down, it was his mom. And he's like, oh my God, you know, this has got to be important. Mom never calls me unless something. So he, so he excuses himself from the press conference. He goes up and he says, hello. And his mom says, Phil Keith, are you chewing gum? <laughs> um, yes, ma'am. Well, it looks awful on TV. Spit it out. <laughs> so he spit it out. And went back to the press conference. Moms, moms have a lot of amazing power, don't they? An influence on us. Another mother decided that her little girl was uh, getting, getting too, uh, I don't know, her snickety at bedtime too slow. So she said, okay, we're going to talk about bedtime rules. All right, new bedtime rules. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put on our PJs. We're going to brush our teeth. And we're only going to read one book. All right, you agree? Yes, I agree. So they get in bed, they're snuggling together, and the little girl says, Mom, she said, today in Sunday school, we learned that there are some kids that don't have a mom or a dad. Would you be their mom? And they read at least three books that night, <laughs> uh, not, not just one. It's not always easy being a mom, right? There are rewards, there are challenges, but this gospel lesson that we have today, John 15, it's perfect, isn't it, for Mother's Day? It's about, it's about love, right? As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. These words are models for mothers and fathers and grandfathers. I'm a new grandfather and grandmothers and sisters and brothers and all kinds of people in relationship in the world. The center of the gospel is love, isn't it? So all week when I'm thinking about these messages I'm going to give on Sunday, I thought, what would Jesus want us to think about from this John 15 chapter on Mother's Day? What would be his message to people if he was standing here about love on this special Mother's Day? And I came up with a few things I want to share with you. I think the first advice Jesus would give mothers would be this. Love brings happiness. Love brings happiness. Just listen to the words of Jesus again. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and remain in his love. These things that I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be complete. Love brings joy and happiness. There was a study done in 1938 of 700 men by Harvard University. And what they did is they followed 700 men for 80 years. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's quite the study, for 80 years. And some of the men were as young as their teens, some were in their 20s, some were older, and they followed them till they died, all of them. 
about 80 years, almost all of them died by the time the study was over. But every couple of years, they made them do a questionnaire. They made them get health tests at Harvard. Every few years, they made them come in for extensive interviews. And they did this over and over and over for 80 years. And the director gave up, got, got up to give them the, um, the director of Harvard st School got up to give the results of the study. Can you, what do you think might have been the results of who was the happiest and the most joyful and the healthy? Here's what he said. He said, here's the, here's the sum up of the study in two sentences. Happiness is love, full stop. The quality of the men's close relationships with others was the greatest predictor of happiness in our life. Quality relationships of love are the most best, the best predictor of happiness. It's not how much money you got in your bank account. It's not the car you drive. It's not your big house that you live in. It's the quality of the relationships that you have. Isn't that, that's pretty powerful. Everything else they said is far second. The stuff you've accumulated, the junk that you've got, your position in life, your job, is way second Do you have loving, healthy relationships. That's Jesus' message, right? That was his truth. That's what he said 2,000 years ago. The second thing that Jesus wanted us to think about is that true love requires sacrifice. Now you mothers sitting out there, did you sacrifice at all for your kids at all? Just a little? Anybody? I bet you did, right? Just a little bit. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for another person. Lay down one's life. I always kind of look for stories, you know, to help illustrate my sermon. I found so many stories of people sacrificing for somebody they, they love. There are so many powerful stories. I just want to share a couple of them with you. Jermaine, young man, almost got arrested for scaling the outside of a building while it was on fire. <laughs> Can you imagine? And the reason was his mom was on the 15th floor and the building was on fire. He went to the front door to help rescue her. She was, uh, you know, couldn't walk very well. Maybe she was in a wheelchair. I don't know all the details. And they wouldn't let him. The police and fire had the building closed off. So he ran around to the side and he climbed up the balconies to her balcony <laughs> and knocked on the door and told and yelled and screamed that she was in the bedroom. And the, and the police went in and they said afterwards, well, we're going to let you pass with just a warning <laughs> like this. But um, isn't that love? And then they said, they said, why did you do that? She goes, she's not surprised by the things I do for her. She knows I'll go above and beyond. She went above and beyond for me, right? That is sacrifice. Another story I thought was cool from China. I'm going to just use the name Lu and Su because I can't pronounce these people's names. But I'm just going to. So Lu and Su met in a little rural town in China. And uh, Su was 10 years older than Lu and already had four kids from a previous marriage, but they fell in love, and nobody in the community liked that. And so they eloped and they moved away up to a little mountain uh, cottage that was just up, up the mountain from a small town. The only problem that Lou found out was that um, it was really hard for the kids and his wife to make that hike up to the thing. So over his life, over the next 20 years or so, he carved 6,000 steps with a chisel <laughs> every day after work so that his wife and kids could walk up and down. They were buried together at the end of their life on the side of the hill right by the cabin. You know, um, love requires sacrifice. And um, the best love has sacrifice. Throughout history, right, throughout history, isn't it powerful the willingness that parents have for sacrificing for their kids? Um, I'll just share one thing I did think about this week about my parents is um, when I went to college, I still had two younger sisters at home. My dad was the only one working, my mom wasn't. And I just remember how much they sacrificed so I could go to college. You guys have these stories? They didn't buy any furniture. They didn't go out to eat. They didn't go on any vacations. They didn't do all this stuff so Larry Hartster could go to Augustana College. And I, at the time, I'm like, Ugh, whatever. You know, I didn't see it. Right? But it's true. It's true. And we all have stories like that. God so loved the world that he gave. Right? So the world goes round 
by sacrifice. And uh, we know that's true. The third thing that I heard Jesus saying to us this morning on Mother's Day is that love is the very essence of faith and life. Love is the essence of faith and life. Paul said, uh, Jesus said, this is my command, love each other. Apostle Paul talked about love a lot too. He said, if I don't have love, I'm nothing. You know? And isn't that true? So did you like this little Dorotheus thing? I think this circle's kind of powerful, isn't it? You know, the center of our life, at the center of faith and life is love. And if you've got problems with the people around your life, in your circle, and you draw closer to God, you will draw closer to them. And if you draw closer to them, you will draw closer to God. He had a bunch of monks that were griping. Can you, I don't think of my monks as somebody that griped, but they didn't like each other. They didn't like the way they lived. They didn't like the way they talked to each other. And he got them all together and made them do this. <laughs> and it's powerful, isn't it? So if we all go on a mission trip, and we all draw a little closer to God from the experience of giving and sacrifice and love and caring, and we study the Bible, and we get closer to God, we're going to get closer to each other. And if we get closer to each other, we're going to get closer to God. And I think that's a powerful message that Jesus has to share with us today. And so, um, it's Mother's Day. What a great day, huh? What a great day. I wish I could call my mom. I'll call my dad instead. <laughs> Today he's still alive. But isn't it a great day to celebrate? Jesus says, love brings happiness and joy. Love requires sacrifice. And love is the essence of life. So if you're low on love, draw closer to Jesus. Praise God. Stand up and do it. Stand up. Praise God, no Lutherans do this. Tell your story. My granddaughter is 40 years old. She worked all night at Children's Hospital. And she came this morning with a beautiful flower and a card. And her little dog that I take care of, a little Yorkie, she went by her sister, she went by her mother, she came by me, she went by her aunt. Took them all to stuff at 8 o'clock this morning after she got out of work. And now she'll go home and sleep all day and she's gonna work tonight. That's love. That is sacrifice. That's sacrificial love. Praise God. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Today we pray especially for the upcoming town hall meeting with Bishop Paul. May next Sunday be a blessed day of reflection and looking toward the future of our community. Hear us, O God. Hear us, Jesus Creating God, the earth praises you, the seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join them in praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, especially Diane, Anne, Karen, Larry, Lee, Grace, Joe, Marvin, Judy, Ray, and those we name now in our hearts and on our lips. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us toward life-changing responses to these needs in our own communities. Be with the dying. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who share your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment now and share the peace with one another. Peace, 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 peace. Let's celebrate Holy Communion together with the great thanksgiving. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus who, living among us, healed the sick, 
fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. The night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is given and shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us, on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come eat and be satisfied. May the body and blood of Jesus be given and shed for you. Amen. Please receive Holy Communion. <laughs> still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses, that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom, to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
congregation please rise and hear me. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia! Thanks be to God. Alleluia!